This is Greg Durfler with Open Source Skateboards, and I'm going to show you how to build a mini ramp. I found free ramp plans at extremeskater.com that would serve as a basis for construction and help with some of the more challenging parts. I downloaded each web page in the tutorial one by one for fear that the website would get taken down while I was building because it looked so old. Now that I had something of a guide, I needed to figure out what kind of setup the space could support. The room is roughly 21 feet long by 12 feet wide, with 9 foot ceilings where there isn't duct work. I originally wanted a 4 foot ramp, which would have fit, albeit barely, but in order to maximize plywood, went with a 3 foot 4 inch height in most places. Anything under 3 foot 7 inches and you can get two ramp sides out of a single 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. This is because the flat bottom consumes about 5 inches of height. Finally, I drew the plan, a bird's eye sketch of the space, and estimated how much wood to buy. On January 6th, at 5.45 a.m., I rolled out of bed and went to Home Depot, where I would be the first person at the store and the only one to reserve the van. I even beat out a lovely family that arrived 20 minutes too late in one of the same van. In the lumber department, I hand-selected each piece of wood and with the help of a store employee, loaded the van in 15-degree weather. Driving back, I felt like Elliot's brother Michael from E.T., mainly because I was so excited. Three quarters inch plywood in hand, I used the string and pencil method to sketch a six foot transition. That's a bit steeper than most ramps, but arguably necessary given the limited length of the room and need for a proportional flat bottom. The mellower or shallower the transition, the less in-between space you get between walls, the steeper, the more space. After cutting the sides, I began sawing two by fours, which would be spaced every six to eight inches apart and secured by two and a half inch screws. With the help of some friends, I drilled holes in the 2-inch nominal Schedule 40 black steel pipe I also bought at 6 a.m., and then threaded 5-inch long, 3 8 inch thick J-bolts through them. J-bolts get secured to the backing 2x4s via nuts and washers, the tighter the better. With the beams and steel pipe in place, I finished the platforms, also known as lips, and pushed each quarter pipe into the wall. Finally, I finished the flat bottom, at which point I had completed the entire skeleton of the ramp. All that was left was to surface it. Armed with patience, determination, and a 24 pack of Trogues Perpetual, I set out to soak and bend multiple sheets of 3 8 inch plywood. After snapping the first, I bought a pack of ratchet straps on Amazon that let me slowly bend each sheet over the course of a couple days. After the plywood layer was finished, after every piece was screwed in, I applied what I thought was the final layer, 3 16 inch MDF panel in staggered fashion over the plywood, only to discover that the steel pipe still stood out too much. The steel pipe, or coping as it's frequently called, is only supposed to stick out about 3 eighths of an inch, and mine was well above that. I ordered additional quarter inch MDF from a local lumber yard that delivered it to my house. Once the third and final layer was finished, I glued down plywood at the foot of the door, where I left space for it to swing, and sealed the ramp with linseed oil to protect against sweat and any moisture in the air. Eventually, I painted the ramp too, because the linseed oil made everything slippery. Finally, it was time to skate it. And that's it. So thanks for watching. Until next time, and probably even then, I'm Greg Durfler, with Open Source Skateboards. Have a great day.